Secret, sorry. This is the truth. I'm sorry. These are my secrets. Maybe I'll do better next time. I'm sorry. These are my secrets. Sorry if y'all can't handle the truth. I'm sorry. These are my secrets. Maybe I'll do better next time. As far as my cultural appropriation of uh, Dia de los Muertos, I'm going to get, but happy DDLM as well. Oh man, you know, we don't have a day to celebrate and reconnect with lost loved ones. Please share with us, teach us. Hi everybody, I'm running out of secrets. <laughs> Do you believe that? Uh, hope everybody had a safe Halloween. Uh, shame that it was so quiet. My gosh, I only had two parties and a total of six trick-or-treaters. And now I have a lot of candy left over. If anyone in Phoenix wants candy, uh, let me know. Come over and I'll <laughs> gladly give you some. Lots of candy. Lots of candy, and uh, but it was a nice evening. It was still very sweet. I still love that night, and I hope next year it's busier, busier, busier. Yep, yep. Hmm. What's coming up this week? Anything important? <laughs> uh, nothing I can think of. <laughs> nothing I can think of. Uh, guys, uh, in Leviticus chapter 25, we learn about the Jubilee year and the Sabbath year. And the Sabbath year was, you know, every seven years, he gave the land a break. And, uh, and then uh, after seven of those cycles, he had the Jubilee year and he gave everyone a break. And he forgot, forgave all the debts and released all the slaves and all the prisoners. And, and, uh, Jesus is the jubilee. Jesus is our liberation from work and slavery and sickness and death and loss and grief and misery, ultimately. And uh, I had a note on my wall that one day I just wanted to do a, uh, a teaching on a life of jubilee and... and uh, it never really grew into much, but here we are. And I guess all I wanted to say um, on this peculiar Sunday before this upcoming week and these upcoming months is uh, nothing is forever. Uh, <laughs> nothing is forever. And at some point, it's really just how much we choose to suffer how much, how many minutes of suffering we choose to add to that which we are concerned with or going through. So if we're going, let's say Sunday to Tuesday, 
or from now until the end of the year, those are a designated amount of days. But if we add to them, it's like we're adding extra days. If we worry or complain, you know, if we make it worse for ourselves. Now, there's some things you can't help but suffer. If you're sick, you're suffering. If you've lost a loved one, you're suffering. Um, but there are some things that we choose to focus on to suffer all the more. And, you know, your Bible says over and over again to focus on the Lord, to walk on water, to think only of these positive, healthy, spiritual things, to walk in the Spirit, to not indulge the flesh. And the flesh is what worries. The flesh is what suffers. Um, we do suffer in our spirit more than enough. But more often than not, we choose to suffer in the flesh as well, or instead, or on top of. And uh, I think that in order to live what people call your best life, you have to first give your life to Christ. You have to first start your life in Christ. You have to first start your life in Christ. Somehow, some way, you have to reconcile with your maker. Make peace with your Father God through Christ. And, and then decide if your life is but a dream <laughs> or but a nightmare. To decide what life you're going to have in Christ. You're going to have your problems, and you're going to have your your um, trials, of course, and you can't help what happens in the world around you, the people around you, and the choices other people make, and the effects of that. But in your world, in your spiritual experience, what are you, what what are you living? What are you living every day? And uh, you know, I. I'm talking to Facebook, you know, right now. I'm talking to Facebook, and I read Facebook every day, and I read so much grief and power and, and energy given to things that really aren't a big deal <laughs> and are things that aren't your concern, really, are not your concern. I mean, um, are we really going to be paralyzed by what's happening around us all the time. Are we really going to be paralyzed? But isn't that a choice at some point? See, I know that people feel like their, their rights and freedoms are being threatened. And that's very well true. But I will tell you, I don't feel like you can take very much from me. I don't think you can take very much from me. Yeah, you may be able to make it where I can't have a document. But you can't take what's in my heart, my soul, my brain, my experience, my encounters. You can't take my love away from me. And you're not going to take my love away from me and replace it with fear. No, you're going to encourage my love. I'm, I'm going to encourage my love. And I'm going to use that to help you in your fear so that we stand up together and we fight what the, the right fight at the right time. You know, fear, uh, the anacronym, F-E-A-R, uh, forget everything and run, or face everything and rise. <laughs> there is a time to run, there is a time to flee, but there's never a time to forget everything to forget who you are in Christ, to forget who you are in your world, in your relationships, in your lives. There's never a time to forget that. It's time to face what is happening in us and around us. But more often than not, it's what's happening or not happening in us, in Christ, that is debilitating us, that's making us weak, that's making us sick making us sad, that's making us scared. And I think that um, it's really important now, more than ever, for every person who claims the name of Christ 
to realize that you are a single entity and you are entirely responsible for everything that has to do with you. Yeah, you give it to Christ and now he's your Lord, but Lord means he tells you what to do and you're responsible to do it. Everything that has to do with you falls under the Lordship of Jesus Christ and you're responsible for what happens next, for what happens next. And the big question is always going to be, what did you do next? <laughs> what did you do next, my friend? What did you do next? What are you going to do next? I want to tell you that a lot of people are scared right now. A lot of people are hurting right now. A lot of people are confused right now. And they're confused by what they see you do. Or people that look like you, that say they're like you. You know, people that say they're Christian and what they're saying and doing. And we're hearing so much, especially in social media. We're hearing so much. And it is frightening a lot of people. It's frightening a lot of people. We're hearing people in power say, um, women can have all the freedom they want as long as they're religious and they do what the Bible says. We're actually hearing people say those words, meaning women can only do what we men tell them they can do according to our interpretation of scripture. We are seeing political powers create political environments with, with the intention with the intention of taking away the right for gay people to get married, which also includes taking away the right for gay people to be guaranteed health care and to be guaranteed jobs. <laughs> Every single one of you knows a woman. Every single one of you knows a gay person. Um, I just heard someone else say um, um, the way America is going to work now is we will help black people but we'll only help them if they're helping themselves. To say those words publicly publicly. These are not fringe people saying these things. And I'm not naming names. And this, this, this goes way beyond politics, but this is actually happening. This is happening. It's not my fault that the political arena is the way it is right now that women and gay people and black people are really in danger. They're really in danger of losing their freedoms, their ability to make their own choices, their health care, their, their um, legal, uh, legal rights, and even their spiritual rights are being threatened over and over again right in front of us by people that are saying, we're Christian, we're Christian, we're Christian. They're not. They're not. I'm sorry. If, if you think it's okay to to take your beliefs and force them on another human being to the point where they can't even get before God and make their own choices unless they're aligned with yours you need to check your Jesus you need to check your Jesus <laughs> It is people using the name of Jesus that are hurting the most people on the planet right now. That is a fact. That is a fact. I think it's a safe thing to say that um, please don't make any decisions um, that are going to ultimately hurt the people you say you love. 
if you have a gay person in your life and you love them and you say you love them, then please don't support anything or anyone that is plotting to take away their freedoms. You can't. Jesus said that. Jesus said, how can you say you're my friend and not do what I say? How can you say you love me and not follow my example? It's the same thing. How can you say you're my friend and go along with a political program that's trying to hurt me? That's trying to hurt me. That's literally saying, I don't have the same rights and freedoms you do. How can you go along with that? How can you go along um, with any program that says that people that aren't white have different rules applied to them? How can you go along with that? How can you go along with any program that says women don't have the same rights and freedoms that men do? How can you go along with that? How can you agree to that? The Bible does not say that. Just because the Bible says a woman submits to her husband and, then, and the way the husband submits to Christ doesn't say that that woman doesn't have any rights or freedoms. That she's not equal. Jesus made us all equal. Every single one of us. Jesus made us all equal. Please. Please. I mean, it's probably too late to make a voting plea because we're at Sunday, the election's Tuesday, and most people have already voted. But from this moment on, please do not side with people that are trying to hurt your friends and your family and your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren. Everyone's saying, I want what's best for this country. I'm sorry. I'm this country. Do you want what's best for me? Do you want what's best for your daughter and your granddaughter? Do you want what's best for your so-called, I have a black friend, your black friend, your Hispanic friend. Do you care about any of these people? Do we care anymore? What is it we really want? Look in the mirror. What do you, who are you? Who are you anymore? Who am I anymore? My gosh, my whole life is soul searching. That is my relationship with Christ. Every day, get before God and say, search my heart, O God. That's in your Bible. <laughs> Find the next bad thing to change and heal and clean up and deliver. Find it. Find it. Save me. Work out my salvation every day with fear and trembling. Are you afraid? Are you trembling before God? Because I don't see it. I don't see it. I am, and I really care about people. I care about the universalness of people. I care that there are people that are seeing and hearing and experiencing our example, and they feel like God doesn't love them. I care about that. I care about that because he does and it is my job as long as I'm living and breathing to let people know that God loves them every single one of them exactly the same and that automatically transfers translates to you all have the same rights as I do and I have the same rights as they do and we all have everything we're all on the same page in the rights department and in the freedoms department. And yet, I cannot turn on the news, I can't go on social media, I can't even be around other Christians before I start hearing, well, if they only acted different, if they were only this way, if they only did this, if they only, my gosh, my gosh, you are they, you are they, we are all they. We are all the same thing. We are all on the Titanic, and we're fighting over who has the best seats. <laughs> we are in this together. There is no they. It's just us. It's just us. It's we.
please, please, do not, do not support anyone or anything that seeks to harm anyone ever. Please. And please don't put Jesus' name on it if you choose to. Please. Own your sin. Own who you are. Own that you are in agreement with there are people less than you. Own that you disagree with everything Jesus said about that. <laughs> that Jesus was wrong and you are better than some people and you are more deserving of God's grace than other people. Talk about an oxymoron. You can't deserve grace. <laughs> you can't deserve grace. Check yourselves, brothers, sisters. It's the world today. The world today is divided on this issue. And the issue is, should one type of Christian have total power over all other people on the planet. That is the issue of the day. That is the issue of the day. There are no other issues that do not fall under the umbrella of that issue. We have to be the generation of Christian believers that say, no, we don't have the right to control the lives of others. We can challenge, we can teach, we can lead by example, we can live our lives peaceably and lovingly, but we can't control the lives of others even if they're doing something we believe is wrong. And by we, I mean corporately, not Paisley. Not Paisley. Because you and I do not agree on everything. <laughs> no matter who you are. No matter who you are. Jesus and I don't agree on everything. <laughs> that takes time. We all have our own biases and experience that we bring to the Christian table. Yet suddenly we are going to legislate morality. We're going to control what other people do. We're going to make it illegal for a woman to choose to have an abortion, but we are going to do nothing about children in cages. We're going to do nothing about homeless people. We're going to do nothing about our vets. We're going to do nothing about people getting out of prison that have no place to go and no lives to go to. We're going to do nothing about poor people. We're going to try to take away welfare from people that need it badly. But we're going to, we're going to die on, uh, on Baby Mountain. We're going to die on Baby Mountain and act like we're being spiritual and righteous and fighting the war for God. That is so biblically unsound. There are way more scriptures about how to treat people in the world around you than there are any scriptures about unborn babies. Now don't tell me I just had a pro-abortion thing going on here. Everyone knows I am pro-life and pro-choice, which means I don't want to control what you do. I would like you to listen to my concerns about choices you're making in every area of your life. That's why I'm a preacher. That's why I'm a minister. That's why I reach out to people. So in the circle of people I reach, I would like to be heard. I would like to influence. But when I want to control I'm a cult leader and a bad one because I'm poor. So I, I will just try to be a good preacher. I'll try to be a good pastor. I'll try to be a good minister. 
These are service jobs. I am going to serve you the Word of God to the best of my ability. I'm going to serve you my testimony, my experience, and my prophecy to the best of my ability. But I can't control you. I can't control you. And I certainly can't condemn you. I can't condemn you for not doing what I think is the right thing, whatever that is. I can't condemn you. I can only present my case. I can only present my case. If you think you deserve more power than influence and in presenting your case lovingly and humbly and accurately, accurately, not what you heard in church, but what's actually in your Bible, and you, gosh, you just can't apply thou shalt not kill to unborn babies. You just can't. I am sorry. I am sorry. You can't. I didn't say there's no scriptures about abortion in the Bible. I'm just saying you can't use that one. You can't use that one. Let's play a game. Find me an example in the Bible that totally justifies controlling what other people do with unborn babies without using thou shalt not kill. Good luck. And, but the spirit of the Bible is very clear. The spirit of Christ, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit is very clear that we are to lead by example. We are to use, pers we are to use persuasion. We are to be humble and meek and we are to wash the feet of our enemies. We are not to control anything. We are not to control anything. This world is not our home. It's not ours to control. It's not ours to control. I've said it before. There's more scriptures that support that Christians shouldn't even be voting <laughs> than there are that Christians should be trying to control politics. That is a very interesting Bible study that I recommend everybody do one day. Everybody do. Now, I want to conclude by saying that no matter what happens next week, no matter what happens in January, we're supposed to love each other. We're supposed to love each other. And love isn't, I love you, but because of who you are, I'm not going to have anything to do with you. That ain't love. That ain't love. We are to unconditionally love one another. We're here to serve. We're here to serve everybody. We're supposed to love everybody the same, not just the people we love. With me? <laughs> so, so, that having been said, no matter what happens, there has to be healing and reconciliation in America after Tuesday. Or we're just going to keep dividing and dying. We're just going to go completely under. And we're all going to lose our families. We're all going to lose our friends. We're all going to lose our livelihoods. What do you think the next disease is going to be on this planet if we don't change God's people? We, God's people, don't change. What do you think is going to happen next? And if you say, well, it's end times. This is all the way it's supposed to go. Let me tell you something. Right now, end times are happening at the hands of Christians. The Antichrist is supposed to not be a Christian. That's not what's happening in the world around us right now. Christians are taking down the planet right now. We are controlling bodies. We're controlling love. We're controlling relationships. We're controlling um, how everything is monitored and handled on the planet. And we are saying the planet does not deserve our love and compassion either. So we're destroying the planet. We're destroying the planet. We are against everything that's happening around us right now. We're against everything and everyone. That's us. Those are the people of God. And we're surprised that the churches are closed. Maybe God wants us to stop. Maybe God wants us to stop. <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. It's time for Christians to humble themselves before God. 
And you know what time that is? Every minute of every day forevermore in Jesus' name. Are you humble? Are you humble before God? When was the last time you were on your knees before God? When was the last time you cried to God? When was the last time you said to God, I'm sorry for what I did here? I'm sorry for what I've done. When was the last time you told another human being you were sorry, that you wronged them? When was the last time you asked someone for their forgiveness? When was the last time you confessed your sin to another human being? What is your faith about? What is your faith about? I want you to live your best life. I want you to Face everything and rise. I want you to be fearless. I want you to be happy. I want you to be on fire. I want you to have victory. And I want you to have testimony. I want you to have the life of Jubilee in Christ that you deserve. But, um, you need to repent. <laughs> you need to confess sin. You need to face that you are a sinner, and that is every day. You need to face stuff. You need to talk to your dad in heaven about stuff. You need to bring stuff to the table that's uncomfortable for you. And you need to bring that to the table with other people as well. With other people as well. Something you really need to do in this life. Something you really need to do in this life. Please, start right now. Don't side with hate. Don't side with division. Don't side with any type of supremacy. Don't side with it at all. Never, 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 never. Nobody is better or more worthy of God's grace than anybody on the planet in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being here. Thank you for showing up every week. Thank you for sharing this with people. I really appreciate when you do that. Um, please support my ministry. Um, uh, you can uh, buy me a coffee. There's a link. You can you donate through Facebook Messenger. There's tons of fundraisers on my page. Just scroll down. It's the next one or the next one. Um, you can PayPal. There's a million ways. You go to my website. There's a bunch of ways. Please give to my ministry. It's the holidays. Let's spread some love around and help people through the holidays. And and uh, <clears throat> I'm here every week. This is the kitchen. We're in Phoenix, Arizona, a non-denominational Christian church. And I am Paisley Yankovich. But you know that because you're friends with me on Facebook. <laughs> and uh, I'll be here next week. And I will love you because you will be here next week. And um, you can also buy a shirt that supports the ministry. It's not this one, because last night I went as a classic Halloween movie. I went as Halloween. But today I'm a lousy sequel to Halloween 2. But there are um, hashtag the real Paisley shirts you can get. And you can buy a coffee, which basically is just giving money to a clever source. You can go to the website, go to the fundraiser. Please share these videos. Please share the ministry. Please come back next week. I love you all. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I'm going to play another song from my Real Man record. And uh, all my music's available for free download on my website. Remember the hashtag, the real Paisley, the real Paisley dot com or Paisley and Kolovich dot com. Pounding, pounding in my head. White bread, don't keep white bread. Stop smoking. Thank you.
Turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness for sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Stop smoking, stop drinking, stop lying.
set so many boundaries and scared a great man away by loving. Let's stop making mistakes in Jesus' name. Amen. Go home. Thanks for watching. If you're still watching, I love you. There's still five, five of you. At least, is that what that means? Love you. Support my ministry. Love you. Bye.